A treacherous wet circuit, perfect for Moric, but maybe not for his teammate Jonathan Milan. This is Croatia race stage four, and a lot of these stages are finished with a sort of circuit around the town that they're finishing in, and it was good weather to start the day. Uh, with Bahrain, maybe. I mean, the favourites to win the stage, but with who? They've got Butrago. There's a 1K sort of punchy climb quite close to the finish. Crest like 7Ks from the finish. And so Wood, Vingegaard, and Yumbo really try. They don't have a sprinter. It finishes in a flat sort of finish. He's not a sprinter. Would DSM go for it? What about uh, Ineos? Could Heidel, could Viviani get over it? Could Milan get over it? Or would they send Morich on the attack, Bahrain victorious? Regardless, they were the team that controlled the stage. You get a very similar break once again, easily managed by them. 250 with 70 Ks to go, the whole team on the front. And I kind of feel like they've changed GC aspirations from Buitrago almost to Jonathan Milan. But in the run into that climb, break under control, caught before it started. It, this big right hand, a right hand hairpin into it, kind of like, uh, uh, not like the Poggio, they hit the Poggio faster. Anyway, Moritz on the front, bringing Milan forward. So it looked like they were going for Milan mainly. They do uh, one lap of the finish line in this corner. Remember this corner here where they G went through cautiously? Uh, this is, it starts to get wet and it's slippery too. The road surface is kind of those pave, pavement. It's not like proper hot mix. And Bahrain are on the front, Ineos are on the front, it's getting narrow. And we've got this right hand. And now, I'm not sure where Vingegaard was. He was second wheel going to this climb. They turn right. You even see, I think, Bowman slipping. It's so slippery. It's steep in parts. And DSM do a great job keeping only in good position. I think he's on the outside of Vingegaard and Bowman. And Milan's back further, back deep, but no one attacks. Uh, DSM don't really launch only maybe he I don't know he didn't really seem to attack they just kind of seemed to stay in good position it was still like a big group it's not strung out as you can see it's still like four wide and riders were attacking but they get over the crest six k's to go no one really wants to continue on I don't know where Milan Milan has barely slipped he's like 15th wheel in this group and it's still a large group Rivera's there for Ineos and Buitrago you see on the radio now I don't know what he's saying. We're saying, we got Milan here, or he's saying, what do you want me to do? And that basically, this the slowing up means reinforcements can come from behind for Bahrain, which is first, I think, Bitrago pacing for Milan, and then a number of other riders come forward for them. They got like two more riders, Pernsteiner, I think, makes it over. So it's, it's looking like a Jonathan Milan sprint victory again with numerous riders. There's no high duck, I don't think, or maybe he was there. There's no Viviani for Ineos. They've got Rivera, who's their GC man. Yumbo are keeping Vingegaard just in, trying to keep him safe into the three category to go uh, marker. But here it gets really technical. Slippery, Rhonda's losing wheels. You see Moric. I mean, Moric on the front for Bahrain when he's not the guy going for the stage. More often than not, has, has not worked in technical or wet finishes. From what I've seen the last couple of years, he... He doesn't ride smooth. He rides the way Matej Moric wants to ride, uh, really aggressively through corners, taking risks. Like you look at the Hay crash in the Tour de France 2021. He was leading through that corner at a million miles an hour. And I mean, in theory, it's not too bad at this point because Milan is third wheel and uh, he ideally should be on Moric wheel and Moric is keeping him forward, keeping the pace up. They are even gapping other riders behind them. But yeah, it's it's just something to think about that maybe in the lead out role he takes more risks than would be ideal. But it's not his mistake here, although he does sort of slide his back wheel. It's the Bardiana Urata crashes which interrupts or affects Milan, who took a good line, actually, maybe better than Morich. Morich ran wide, but what should Morich do here? He's got Milan gapped off the wheel, and there's the Trek rider blocked. Should he attack, or should he wait for Milan, or what should he do? Maybe Milan's had a mechanical. I think he does the right thing, which is to attack. This is under 1K to go, because you don't know. Milan's looking down at his gears. There's a big gap. He forces everyone else to chase, and then Milan slips again, trying to get back on top of his gears. It's uh, Rivera closing him down. Laurence, his third wheel in his wheel in Milan. This is now with 300 meters to go, but here's the problem. Here's where Moritz probably does make the mistake, and I've said this a number of times, and, and Mullen did a good job of not doing this in the Vuelta in lead-outs, which is when it's under 300 meters to go or late, do not keep doing a lead-out when your man you're leading out is not in your wheel or is not third wheel when he's deep and trying to move up. We're 150 meters to go now, and Moritz effectively 
forces Laurence to go wide because this is a sweeping left-hand bend. Moric goes a bit diagonally to the opposite barrier, and that then forces Milan to be to go wide as well. He's following Laurence, but he gets blocked, and he has to stop pedaling here. And so if Moric had gone tighter to the barrier, followed his normal line, maybe Rivera wins, but I think Milan wins comfortably. Because it, Milan gets blocked here going wide because of the Moric lead out going to that barrier, Laurence sneaks through and Milan just just cannot open up. And so Laurence, he came second, I think, in Britannia Classic, which was a really good result behind Wout van Aert. And here you see Brandon Rivera try to end his <laughs> end his own season and hits the 90 kilo Milan and um, gets the big don't argue back into fourth. So unlucky for Milan, technical finish. Uh, happiness for BNB after the disappointment with Pierre Barbier the other day. They do get the W with the young and talented Axel Laurence Head of Milan, who extends his lead six bunch seconds on Vingegaard, Moritz third, then Brandon Rivera. Jaime Fernandez, Lawrence Rex, and Avarestri rounding out the top seven in terms of GC. As I said, Milan now a 10 second lead on Vingegaard. Here's what Lawrence had to say after the stage. Uh, it was really tricky and um, really, really slippery with the, with the rain. So um, I, I tried to stay uh, all the time in a, in a good position on the, on the final lap. And um, yeah, uh, in the last corner, one, one guy's uh, fall and uh, I was um, I was in a good placement, so I can uh, throw back to uh, to Moric. And um, yeah, w when I saw uh, Moric and Rivera just in front of me, I said, "Okay, I'm more faster." So now uh, it it's my time, and uh, I did. Uh, I uh, I give all for the for the finish line, and uh, yeah, I get my first win, so it's incredible. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below. Can the big unit? Milan, hold on to win GC in this race. I'd love to see it, but Vingegaard only 10 seconds back. We'll see in the next coming days. Until then, ciao.